welcome to the Housebroken Comic Con at Home channel. I'm Jen Crittenden. I am uh, one of the co creators and the co showrunner. And for those of you who don't know um, about Housebroken, it's a show that centers around a group of neighborhood pets and animals who are exploring their issues. To kick things off, I will introduce you to our amazing cast. We have Lisa Kudrow as Penny. <laughs> we have Matt Jackson as Chief. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Will Forte as Shell. Hello. We have Tony Hale as Diablo and Max. Hello. We have Karen Horgan as Papa. Hi. <laughs> and Jason Manzoukas as the gray one. Oh, hello there. Sam <laughs> <laughs> Richardson as Chico. Hey. Hey, and uh, co-creator and the voice of Elsa, the Corgi, Clea Duvall. Hi. And my co-creator and co-showrunner, the person I text 3,000 times a day, Gabby Allen. Hi. Hi, Jen. Hi, Gabby. Um, so, to start us off, uh, Clea, will you tell us a little bit about the idea that you had that was sort of the kernel of inspiration for the show? The kernel of the idea for Housebroken came from, um, we have two cats and one of them is named Twig and she is very complicated. She is always just dissatisfied. And uh, she spent a very long time, every single time I would watch TV, she would just sit on the TV stand watching me while I watched TV, just st staring dead at me. And I could just tell that there was like something she was trying to communicate something that she wanted, some needs that I was not meeting. And all I wanted was to be able to go to counseling with her to find out what that is because I so desperately wanted to meet her needs. Um, and then I just started thinking about, you know, if animals did go to therapy, what would they talk about? You know, like what are their perceptions of the situations in our lives? Because as humans, we project so much onto them and it's all our human stuff, but there's no way that they you know, that that's how they look at the lives that we share with them. So um, I had this idea of, you know, like animals and counseling, and I brought it to Gabby and Jen, and they had the amazing idea to turn it into um, a group of animals working through their issues together, and um, that we started uh, getting together and brainstorming and housebroken um, came from that. The second that she um, started talking to us about this idea, we were instantly intrigued. We're writers, so obviously we're in therapy. So that part, and then we also, Jen and I are are giant, like profound animal lovers. And um, I grew up with cats and dogs, and so did Jen. And we have multiple dogs between us, and we love our pets. And Jen and I spent a lot of time already talking about our pets. Like Jen, we'd start every day at work. Almost, um, Jen would say, like, tell me what her dog ate, and got into that she wasn't supposed to be eating, and like how much throw up, and how many times she was never not at the vet. <laughs> and um, so we already had a, there was a lot of animal talk in our partnership. And so it just kind of like instantly ticked all of our boxes. And we were super excited about like working with Clea and the idea. And so it all came together. You know, one of the most incredible things about working on this show is our incredible cast. I can't, if every t single time a new person came on board, I just couldn't believe how lucky we were. Starting with Lisa, uh, could you tell us a little bit about Honey? Sure. I know all about Honey. <laughs> um, <laughs> honey's a standard poodle, not a toy poodle. Standard poodles are nice and they're intelligent, very elegant, poised, sophisticated. Let's do something different. Yes, something wild. Come on, Jill. We need this. I'm thinking about something that, mm, you know, frames her face. Yes, frame it. Frame the hell out of it. Okay, let's do it. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm perfect for it. <laughs> it's true. Uh, honey's great, and Honey has decided Honey's the therapist because Honey's uh, human is a therapist. Not really credentialed, but doing it anyway. Well, thank you all for coming to this emergency session. It wasn't convenient. Honey is, has a, um, an arranged relationship with Chief, um, like most pets do, find themselves in an arranged relationship, right? Um, but I think, you know, Honey's trying to make the best of it because there's a lot to love about Chief. 
These sessions are meant to provide a safe place, an oasis of calm. An oasis, an oasis, an, o an oasis of calm so you can feel your feelings. Drop the stick! What? You have to drop the stick to get through the door. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> oh. What? Two sticks? I'm coming from my, uh, the garage in my sailboat. And I want to talk <laughs> about Chief. Uh, Honey and Chief have a very um, probably simple relationship in Chief's mind. Uh, may maybe arranged, but, um, you know, I think he, it's sort of emblematic of the way Chief thinks about life, I think, which is in a very positive, simplistic way. Mine, 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 and mine. <laughs> He, um, you know, maybe doesn't even isn't aware that it was arranged, but he's very happy. He eats and he sleeps and he sort of uh, modeled after a good friend who, after like a bunch of cocktails, just talks about how great life is. Um, and that's a little bit like, uh, you know, the way we should all view life, really, just sim simply. <laughs> so Tabitha is a Persian cat, very beautiful. Very expensive, very, very well bred. I'm Tabitha. Pretty kitty, kitty litters, prettiest kitty. 2010 to 2014. Probably cost around 600 to $800. <laughs> 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 I was a kitten. She's, she's a, an ex show cat. So her whole deal is that she, she's not on the circuit anymore. And she's trying, she's trying to come to terms with that. You know, it's hard. So that's that's why that's why she ends up in therapy. I'm sorry, I can't focus when Honey's haircut remind me of every mistake I ever make. Why we're we not talking about it? There's a new younger kitten on the block. I don't hear can opening. Why? Oh, what is that smell? Excuse me, Daddy, Brad. There have been mistake. I think you put kitty litter in my food bowl. Tabitha hates her new food. She'll eat when she's hungry. Senior food for old cats. And she has a sort of uh, a, a sort of love hate, uh, will they, won't they, uh, relationship with uh, the grey one, played by Jason Mantzoukas. He'd love to tell you about the grey one. I think. <laughs> I, I, I'd rather not. <laughs> 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 um, yes, I play the gray one. Uh, the gray one is a feral cat that lives in a house that is owned by a hoarder, uh, along with like, I don't know, 30, 40 other cats, other feral cats. There seems to be a limitless number of feral cats who are constantly engaged in either like uh, combat with each other. I'll tell you! Hey, occupied! You guys mind? I'm trying to bury myself alive. Yeah, I got 40 best friends. Well, 39 now. <laughs> or, uh, I, and this may be a spoiler alert, or constructing elaborate dance routines uh, for their own enjoyment. So guys, there's a lot happening in this show. Um, <clears throat> a real will they, won't they for Tabitha and the gray one. Um, really, you know, a, a cat who for, you know, like uh, as everyone's talking about, has trust issues such that, you know, really doesn't understand that he's capable of being loved, doesn't think he deserves love, is is alone in this world. I, 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 I was very easy for me to draw on my personal uh, experiences, uh, being just, you know, tragically alone in this world. This is where we talk about this, right? <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Another member of the group therapy who takes up a lot of the time is a turtle or tortoise, voiced by Will Forte. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, I play Shell, who is kind of a creepy, egotistical uh, house turtle. <clears throat> Lindsay and I have been pushing the boundaries of our intimacy. Okay. Oh. Come out. That is to say, physically. Come on! More specifically, sexually. Oh. I know. So I have to do a lot of acting because I think everyone knows that I am a very, in real life, a very giving person, and I'm not creepy <laughs> at <anywhere. laughs>
This reeks of censorship. Now, Shell. Lindsay is my everything. And if I'm prohibited from... I'm storming out. I'm storming out of here. Walking out right now. Oh, nobody stop me, because I am out of here. Leaving in a huff. Here I'm going. Storming out. And so another character uh, that's here is... Uh, well, Tony Hale plays a variety of characters, and he's uh, Max and Diablo. Am, am I right? Both Max and Diablo. Tony, get, get, get. I play um, Diablo, who is um, an anxious uh, character that I don't play often, so that was nice and unique for me to play. <sighs> Just a neurotic dog talking to himself in a crate. Everything I hoped not to be. No, 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 no Ian. Don't come any closer. Where's the adult supervision? And then I play Max, who is a pot-bellied pig. Hey, guess what? The 23 and Me results came back, and it turns out you're a microwave. <laughs> oh, looks like Boxing Day came before Christmas this year. And it is really, it's really fun to play both. I bet a child. What? <gasps> And That's a big oopsie. I expected a wider range of reactions. I'm just enjoying a little Topo Chico. What <laughs> <laughs> coincidence? My character's name is Chico. <laughs> Chico, uh, the cat, is played by me, <laughs> and he's a big old chunky cat who is obsessed with his owner. Uh, and when his owner is gone, which is a lot, he over he eats to like. Uh, to compensate emotionally. Kevin left town again. He doesn't show it, but it's hard for him to be away from me. Oh, dude, get off! It, it was fun to, to get to play a character like that because I am so independent and like I'm famous for my six pack. <laughs> so like, uh, kind of getting to play a, 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 a sweetheart. I'm also like known as being like a very mean and like abrasive person so yeah. chico being the opposite of that who's like very sweet sweetly unflappable and kind of uh uh just always like optimistic even even about his own uh, <laughs> uh neuroses whoa you were not kidding about the food surplus this is all for you yeah have some kevin doesn't mind i i pretend this is kevin when he's out of town oh it was like really fun to play, and I and I, I was able to draw a lot of that from my my uh, my girlfriend and I live together. And we have two cats. Uh, we actually have uh, Gus, and we have Conan, who is very much the gray one. Come to find out that he's a Siberian forest cat, and he's very much like Tabitha. Cat's like worth five thousand dollars, but just found us, uh, and then like it was lived out, lived outside of our house for like two years, and finally we're like come move in the house, and then. Wow. It's a, a super, super fancy cat. Elsa is a, uh, she's a corgi whose owner got her a, a service vest on the internet that is fake, but Elsa doesn't know it's fake. So she's really taken on the self-importance of a dog um, who performs a service, although Elsa doesn't really do anything. I'm Elsa, service dog, thank you. Uh, I answer to she, her, hers, and... And I'm kind of the unofficial co-leader of the group. She's not. Nope. She's like, obsessed with Honey and is also very competitive with Honey. Um, so she's trying to replace her and be her all at the same time. I know you lost your best friend, but you've still got your best friend. I'm talking about me. I got that, Elsa. Yeah. I'm free now if you want to dig into the trauma of your sudden and devastating loss. Oh, that's okay. I'm actually good. Thanks. You're not, but I'm here when you're ready. Poor thing. Because Honey is, uh, has been matched with Chief, who is really lovable, but uh, I think um, she's sort of looking for fulfillment elsewhere and then this really dangerous exciting coyote is in the backyard oh well <gasps> and it's just really really 
tempting. And, and I mean, the honey is so buttoned up because she's a standard poodle and very bright and sophisticated and elegant and beautiful. Did I say that part already? I did. I think I'm wrong. <laughs> or one of you did. Also, she gets to sort of explore her wild side. And those things are very funny to me, down the line, when you get to them. I think that's just really funny how wild she thinks she is. Honey invites a wild animal to join the group, maybe as like a little test to see how it is to be around a wild animal, um, touching on that arc over the season where she's tempted by a coyote. You know there's a coyote in the area, a real sexy, dangerous one too. Really? Did you hear that? What was that? I'll bite its danglies. My garbage, me, mine. A raccoon comes into the group, and that is voiced by Tim Simons. And that's super exciting for us because when Clea and Gabby and I first came up with um, one of our first brainstorming sessions, we were having so much fun talking about the show, and we took a picture of ourselves, and we sent it to Tim and said, we're working on a project, and you're not included. And we wanted him to <laughs> tell us. What do you want, cat? Oh, nothing. Just, you know, walking on the wild side, like you are. Yeah, but you're walking home. The streets are my home. Oh, you think I'm not tough? I ate my brother in the womb. Who didn't? Uh, my brother. And, um, and then we did include him, and he's a, he's a hilarious raccoon. Rip into her. That's what group therapy's about. If you're hungry, why don't you just go kill a bird and eat it like a cat? Whoa, whoa, shots fired! I don't know what you're laughing about, Piggy. Apparently, this guy went to market and had roast beef. All right, that's not, I don't think we need to go there. So Shell uh, starts a relationship with a croc. Um, and, uh, you know, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, he's the, Shell's a male turtle and a croc is a, is a, 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 a tortoise enough like to <laughs> that is basically I would say that a croc is kind of a female shoe. I could get lost in those eyes. I feel we both want the same thing, but please let me know if I'm misreading your signals. Uh, 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 uh. Falling for you. I mean, it's weird, you know, when you have hobbies <laughs> that you do in your normal life and finally they intersect with with your professional life. And this was finally like, you know, being able to do <laughs> stuff like that. She was a shoe. A croc, to be specific. I didn't realize until after we made love. That seems late. You're the ones who told me to hit that. And I did. Hard. We had a table read of about now what feels like eight years ago at Fox. And then with COVID, we were sort of forced to do everything, you know, remotely uh, in Zoom. Um, and so we w managed to effectively do it uh, kind of amazingly. You know, we, we kind of had to do everything on Zoom until I guess things started, you know, um, opening up a little bit more. And then uh, Lisa and I actually got to record together, um, albeit sort of in separate, kind of capsules. Pull it together, man! <laughs> which was really fun, um, just because, you know, it's, it always gives, provides more energy and the ability to play off of someone. And um, and a lot of our scenes were together, so we had a really fun time doing that. And luckily, the creators were not anywhere near the facility, so we had some more fun <laughs> there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, the good thing about voiceover is you can, you know, kind of get away with a lot more, um, more so than obviously with something live action, it's a little more difficult, but with voiceover, you can kind of keep the train going. And these guys did a, a great job at that. I think for me, a lot of it was kind of, you know, like Nat was saying, we're being forced to be at home for the whole year. I don't have pets. I don't have a cat. I've never owned a cat. So for me, it was really difficult to get into the kind of mindset of the gray one. So I, I, I cut a refrigerator box in half and I filled it with kitty litter and have spent the whole year 
trying to understand how cats use the bathroom, you know? Um, <laughs> what I didn't know until recently is cats' owners normally kind of empty out the box, <laughs> uh, you know, um, semi, semi-frequently, which I did not know about. So, so I've got a pretty nasty situation going on in my bedroom. Well, we've had our fun. Let's move on to something else. Sorry, I've got to flag it. We're out of time. Well, that wraps up our first ever Housebroken Comic-Con panel. Uh, hopefully next year we get to see you guys all in person. And please don't forget to check out our show every Monday at 9, 8 Central on Fox. Thanks so much for joining us. We had a blast. Thanks. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.